Hey guys, so my name is Alyssa. This is my channel, that's Alyssa XL, for those who don't already know. Um, so I am in nursing school. I attend Chamberlain University. Um, it's a three-year accelerated BSN program. So basically, I'm just going to be talking about some things that I wish I knew beforehand and stuff like that for people who are just in general going into nursing school and then some people who are considering Chamberlain. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so one, the first thing that I, I'm just looking on my iPad. Um, I wrote like the key things that I wanted to discuss with you guys today. So I'm just going to be looking down on my iPad. Um, so first thing I wanted to do is tell you guys one thing about nursing school is that you make friends and these girls that you meet, girls or guys that you meet, typically you feel you make a bond with them because you guys are going through the same thing and nursing school is not easy so it's good to have friends so you guys can form study groups you guys can work together and you guys can just be there for each other and you guys are on the same type of schedule in the sense so then you guys can make plans outside of studying to go out and stuff like that like i have a group of friends that I became friends with at nursing school and we make plans to go out and stuff like that. We'll review together also. So it's really great. Um, number two is grading scale between regular college and nursing school is different. For Chamberlain, below 76 is considered failing. So it's very, um, I actually have it. I took a screenshot of it. Okay, so an A is 100 to 94%. Uh, uh, a minus is a 92 to 93, a B plus is a 89 to 91, and a B is 86 to 88, B minus is 84 to 85, C plus is 81 to 83, and then a C is 76 to 80. So if you go below a 76 though, it's failing. So I know in uh, some other nursing schools, it's the same way. And I know another girl's video that I watched, she said her school, a 78 is failing. So keep that in mind, the grading is different. So number three, every year you have to get um, the tuberculosis test. Well, either if you do it, or you can just get the blood work or the x-ray um and you have to get a annual flu shot so that's required for chamberlain at my location um in the beginning we had to do the full physical and proof of vaccinations and titers and all that type of stuff um but as it's been a year since i've did that and i only had to repeat the um tuberculosis and then i'll have to do my flu shot in october and the covid vaccine was required um so you would either get the covid vaccine or you would apply for an exemption so the fourth thing i wanted to talk about is um basically so you have lectures and labs for a majority of the class and the lab portion would typically be the clinical portion um, when you get to those set of classes like in the beginning you have health assessment that's like not clinical um but you do have a lab so you have a lecture and a lab so in those labs you learn skills that you're going to be eventually testing off for and that's going to be my fifth thing that you have um skill check offs so and health assessment it depends on how your school is we have a health assessment one and two so in health assessment one we do um head to chest assessment and then health assessment two we did the head to toe assessment so those are basically at the end of the course um you have to everything that you've learned throughout the lab um you're gonna have an instructor is going to assess you doing it to uh like a mannequin and um there's certain things you have to verbalize as you're doing it and it has to be done in a certain amount of time um so that's one thing that you'll have checkoffs and my fundamental skills lab we had a check off every single week so we'd go into the lab we would learn something new and then we would have our ch our test off for what we learned the week before so that would be every single week because we met once a week in the lab component so then my next thing would be number six this mainly goes for chamberlain is how the breaks are scheduled so you have um 
a winter break which starts about like December 18th 19th depending on your schedule and then we return back I believe like January 3rd or 4th one of those dates um then you have a spring break spring break is approximately a week um in April I believe and then your summer break is one week in June um you go to school throughout July and August you don't have a full summer break like um regular colleges do have july like june july and august off we don't have that so you're going throughout june and july and you don't get a break um september and november you get like the, um thanksgiving off that's pretty much it so you're going from your from the end of june till december basically straight forward no break so that might be a problem for some people. That's one thing you might want to consider before going to Chamberlain. And the seventh thing was that the COVID vaccination is required um, at Chamberlain. So that's one thing you might want to consider if you're completely against the vaccination. Um, they do allow exemptions. Um but it kind of depends on the reasoning you want to get exempt, I guess. I don't really know how that whole approval process works, but that's something you might want to consider. Then the eighth thing I wanted to tell you was that, so the classes were in an eight week sessions. We don't have semesters. So a regular college it has classes um, from September until December. Our classes, that, and that's the same classes they have from September to December. We are in sessions, so our sessions are eight weeks long. So every eight weeks, you're gonna get a new set of classes. So typically people take about two to three classes each session. So let's say for now, so my session started in July and now it's ending the end of August. So I'll get, I'm getting two new classes from September until the end of October. Then end of no October till mid December, I'll be taking another two classes. So basically you are learning more information in a shorter time because typically, um, schools are in semesters they're learning from september to december they're learning all that material we're learning material for a class in eight weeks so that's something you might want to consider it's a lot of material but it's doable to pass and learn and retain that information then um number nine I wanted to say organization is key. You definitely, in any nursing school, you wanna keep a planner, whether it's on your phone, on your iPad, um, or a physical planner. I do my phone. I use my phone because it's more convenient for me with my work schedule and stuff like that, having it all in one place and having it with me to operate and like plan my days accordingly. Um, but definitely want to keep track of all your assignments do upcoming tests upcoming quizzes so you don't fall behind and you can prepare in advance number 10 is that at chamberlain um the exams are typically fall in the same week so let's say i'm t like for health assessment and fundamentals that i just took my exams were all in the same week so i believe it was week two week four weeks six wait now i'm getting confused week four week six and then week eight so they were all the same week so my class schedule basically i have i had health assessment no fundamentals on monday health assessment tuesday so i took my one exam on monday then my other exam tuesday so that's something you want to also consider um typically i don't know how other schools do it but it's kind of like your classes is just kind of random and stuff like put together um but this everything kind of falls on the same week of stuff being due and exam so it kind of sucks um and then this is 11 i went over 10 but i felt like this was important to discuss so i know a lot of people well i actually had professors say it before oh i don't you guys can't work while you're in nursing school and stuff like that i don't believe that um i personally know i couldn't work full-time while in nursing school i work part-time and i'm a nanny so at typically most of my jobs i'm able to bring my work and study i do have downtime they know i am in school and it depends on the age group of the children i might not have to attend to them every second so i am able to study or if the children are younger and they take naps i'm able to study during their nap time 
Um, so it's important to time management. I like to reduce my work schedule the weeks that I have exams, but I'm able to do that with the type of work that I do. Not everybody is able to do that. So it's important to have a job that kind of works with you in the sense you don't want to overwork yourself. And then you're finding when it comes to time for exam, you have to cram, you barely have enough time to study. I wouldn't recommend working full time, but of course some people have to work full time. But if you do work full time, um, I would definitely recommend, you know, you really planning out your schedule to make sure you have an adequate amount of sleep on, and then studying factored in. Um, I can't really say how much time you should study. Everybody's different because it depends how well you retain information. Some people like me, I don't retain information that well. So I have to put in extra time compared to some people. They retain things fast, so they don't have to put in that much time. So it really depends. But it is definitely doable. You're definitely able to work in nursing school because I mean, some people have to work in nursing school because how else are you going to pay for school or the bills or etc. Um, so it's definitely doable. You just really have to plan accordingly. Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for my video. This is my first like nursing related video on my channel. I'm definitely going to start doing some more nursing related videos as I um, go further in the program. This is my first year at nursing school. Before this, I did do prerequisites at community college, but this is my this September will mark a year at being in nursing school. So I definitely feel as though I got the feel for things and I'm ready to kind of share my experience and document my experience as I'm going through my journey. I do have a nursing Instagram that I will link down below for you guys to follow if you are in nursing school and just want to see how it's going for me or if you just want to see how it's going, um, feel free to follow the page. If you guys have any questions um, or any tips or anything like that that I did not discuss comment them down below if you are in nursing school feel free to interact if you have any tips you would like to give for me or anything you want to basically add to this video comment it down below like I would really appreciate it and I'm sure other people who are watching it will appreciate to hear other people's feedback also okay so make sure you guys like this video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed Bye.